It all began with an act of violence. Oroku Nagi, jealous of the love between Hamato Yoshi and Tang Shen, tried to force her to love him. But when Yoshi came to Shen's house for a visit, he discovered Nagi beating his girlfriend. In a rage, he murdered him, starting the never-ending cycle of revenge that was the backbone of the original Ninja Turtles. Nagi's death inspired Oroku Saki to become the Foot Clan's leader and get revenge on Yoshi and Shen. The years passed and the Turtles made sure to eliminate the Shredder. That's a story explored in this other video. I already talked about Hamato Hana in this other video, but what happened to the rest of the Hamato family? The ghost story I will discuss today was published in Tales of the TMNT, Volume 2, Number 19, in January 2006. It was written by Ross May with Steve Murphy, with art by Chris Allen and Steve Rolston. In this adventure, Splinter and the Turtles made a pilgrimage to Japan, to a small village, looking for something important. Splinter was looking for the house where he used to live with Yoshi, in the woods outside the town. While searching for it without clear directions, Raphael and Michelangelo finally ran into the remains of that house, only a foundation claimed by nature. Splinter theorized that after Yoshi killed Nagi, he brought dishonor onto his entire family. For this act, the Foot Clan might have ordered the death of every family member, and they probably burned down the house as well. But he also imagined that the Hamatos, knowing that their lives would be in danger, might have fled beforehand. This would explain Hamato Hana's origin. Suddenly, they heard the villagers calling out for two girls, Michi and Naoko. Splinter, who could understand Japanese, overheard the parents mentioning the possibility that their two girls may have gone to an abandoned house a house where an evil spirit dwelled. They sprinted out to that house to follow the action and witnessed how the parents could not open the door. The house was supernaturally sealed. Well, almost. Donatello found a broken window and they used it to get into the house to rescue the two little girls. Once inside, Splinter started having flashes of Nagi beating Tang Shen. It wouldn't take them long to meet the ghost that haunted the abandoned house. They escaped the ghostly attack and found the two girls wholly terrified. Splinter tried to calm them down, but the soul sight of four mutated turtles and a giant rat was probably not a very calming situation. The ghost continued his attacks until Splinter realized the ghost was the afterlife spirit of Oroku Nagi, trapped in the house where he was murdered, Tang Shen's house. This realization made Nagi aware of who Splinter was as well. Nagi was even more furious that they were somewhat allied with Yoshi. For Splinter, there was only one way to purify the unsettling aura of the house. Burning down the house. That way, they would finally release Oroku Nagi to continue his journey to the afterlife. Through the fire, the turtles and Splinter rescued the girls and then stood by the side of the woods to see the house reduced to ashes. The turtles were sorry to have destroyed another important place for Splinter but he was happy to have released Oroku Nagi's troubled spirit from Tang Shen's house, even if they had to burn it to accomplish that. The Mirage Turtles were always trapped in an endless cycle of revenge, so it was nice to have some kind of closure to at least that very first incident. The release of Nagi's spirit may have also acted as an exorcism for Splinter, to let the past go and embrace peace and love once again. But what happened to the rest of the Hamato and Tang families? Well, the Hamato side remained unexplored, but the Tang family, that's a topic for a different video. Thanks for watching.